Hello everyone and welcome to my YouTube channel once again. In today's video I will show you how you can organize your RSpec tests in a way that are easier to read. Stay with me. I don't know if this has happened to you already, but in my experience using RSpec I have seen the same problem in many code bases. And it is that with all those let before subject, shared context, shared examples, etc. that RSpec has, I find myself very often in the situation where it's very difficult to know what is being tested in a test. And this is because sometimes your test is using a variable or an object that was defined before in, the, in that file or probably that example is using a shared context which was defined in another file etc. First of all I want to say that RSpec is a great gem and when you use shared context, shared examples, let, subject and whatever in the right way it's great and it's the gem I use the most in order to create my test suites. But I often see the problem where tests are not properly organized and you see yourself scrolling up and down in or going through different test files in order to understand what's going on in a single test. So first let me show you how the problem looks like with a code example and let's see then an alternative that the guys at Thoughtbot has proposed and is the one that I'm using actually since many years. Okay, let's first focus on the problem and then let's see the alternative. We will be testing an hypothetical order billing process. So for example, if you have an application that has a um, billing process, we will be acting like we are testing that. In both situations, both in the problem and in the alternative, I will be using a factory. So as you can see here in the factory, we are going to create basically two types of orders. There will be a regular order, which just has a user, and then it will be also a monthly subscription order that besides the user will have an associated monthly plan to it. Okay, let's go to what I first described as a problem, but it's not a problem. It's basically, in my opinion, a not so clear way to write tests. And it's this. In many applications, what I've seen is that they want to go with don't repeat yourself at some point that mm, specs are not readable. For example here, at least you have um, good text here, but this could not be true. I mean, sometimes things are changed between, I mean, in the specs, but the description remains the same. But in this case, you could make yourself an idea of what's going on by just reading the descriptions. But let's see the test here. You see that it only has an expectation, but you don't see anything here going on actually. So in order to know what's happening, you then need to see, to, you need to go up here and see, okay, it has a subject, which is using an order, but where is this order defined? And then you see that it's here. And then you also realize that the, some property of the order is being verified here. And then you see, just think to yourself, okay, what, what's going on here? What is being executed? And you see, you find it here finally in a before each. You see that, okay, they say, okay, subject invoice. Okay, this is what is being tested here. So you say that whenever you execute subject invoice, you want to have the next invoice set uh, in the next month. But you see that you need to go up and down. And this is a very small file, I mean, Imagine yourself if this was the real builder spec, you will find a huge class here testing a huge spec file and most likely you will also have shared context and shared examples and you will also need to go and visit other files in order to have an idea of what was going on. So let me now explain you the alternative and let's go back to the example after that. So the alternative that the Thoughtbot guys have proposed to this problem is to have like a four-phase test pattern. 
first setup in which you set all the conditions needed for the test. The second is exercise in which you actually execute the function that's being tested. The third one is verification in which you check that the expectations you had for that test have been fulfilled. And the fourth one is tear down just in case you need to clean anything in the database that shouldn't be there in your next test. Okay, now that you know the four phase pattern, let's see the alternative. We have this here with the subjects, before, let's and whatever, and that you know that we had to scroll up and down in order to understand what was going on here in the test. In, and the alternative is this one. The alternative probably sacrifices a little bit that don't repeat yourself mantra, but it gains in readability. And Probably tests are the only place in my code base in which I will sacrifice don't repeat yourself to gain more readability. As you can see, we have three phases here. The first one in the setup, we create a monthly subscription order. Then in the second phase in exercise, we execute invoice with the biller with that order that we have created here. We don't have to jump and see what, where, where was this order created, it's here. And then in the verification phase, which is right after that, we check the property in the order that we have created here. So everything is in the example. You don't have to look at anything anywhere else. And the same here. The only phase that is not present is the phase of tear down. And this is because in that will be handled by our test framework here. But in case that you had to explicitly do it, this here will be the place to do that. And that was it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed this content. If you did, please consider subscribing to my channel so that you don't miss any further updates. And also please consider smashing the like button so that I know that you like this video so I can create more on this topic. And without further ado, I hope to see you in my next video. Adios.